that side, even from I UK. And so that just one hand here. And he cannot do it. From, see? If I want to use six. <laughs> I'm Antonio Graceffo. I'm a book author from New York City. And for 10 years I've been living in Asia, traveling from country to country, studying martial arts, studying languages, learning about the culture. One more time, yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm Antonio Graceffo. I'm a book author, and I'm from New York City. For 10 years now I've been traveling around Asia, going from country to country, studying languages, studying culture, and martial arts. Today, we're in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, and we're going to be meeting a very special martial arts master who teaches Volkator, the ancient Cambodian martial art. Someone hold you? Yeah. Just one hand. Just one hand. And let him do it. <laughs> don't don't bend, don't bend. If he put this side, don't put this side. Oh. And let him go it. Don't stop. <laughs> Okay, so I'm Antonio Graceffo. Today we're in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Today I have Mr. Kalt Hong. And he is a big time producer, director no <laughs> for TV. Small fry. <laughs> and he's come all the way from Singapore with his crew. And Tim is the greatest cameraman in the world. So if you're looking for a cameraman or a director, you can hire these guys. So we're doing a screen test for, for a new TV show, hopefully. So you've worked on a lot of shows. Yeah, of course. What are you doing right now? We are shooting a TV show for Channel News Asia, which is a Singapore-based uh, uh, broadcaster. Basically, we are doing a show about food culture in Cambodia. And we are taking the presenter to all over Asia to uncover interesting ways of life and look at, looking at cultures through what they eat at home and so on. Oh, what's the name of the show? Accidental Chef. The Accidental Chef, and it's starring Mel. Mel Wynn. This is Mel, the presenter. Do you have a last name? Lee. Melvin Lee. Hey, uh, I'm a Singapore-born chef, but I went under the wings of a one Michelin star chef. Um, learned a lot from him, so I do Italian, and I'm a chef from Singapore. Uh, I do boxing. I do. He does Muay Thai, but I told him don't use that word while we're in yeah. Cambodia. He does very sensitive. He does yeah. kickboxing, <laughs> international <laughs> kickboxing. Yeah. So, nice to meet Antonio. Great guy. <laughs> nice to meet Mel. Accidental chef. Where did you go? Uh, I, I went to a few Asian countries: uh, Taipei, China, Vietnam, Philippines, and uh, I think Cambodia. Now. Okay, cool, excellent. So you catch that on Channel News Asia. The thing that is always difficult for me on other shows, they want me to tone down my energy and all the Asians, they think I'm doing hip hop. It's just the way I talk, man. I just talk like that. I'm excited about what I'm saying, so I move. But anyway, they wanted me to tone it down, which is pretty funny. And sometimes they want me to talk and do stuff without my boxing gloves. That's really hard for me, but I'm trying to transition into being more of a presenter and less of a fighter. So you be the judge. Ah! Ah! I got beat up all the time, so if I went and learned martial arts, I could defend myself. So the first thing I thought about was self-defense, and then the other thing was, my two biggest heroes when I was a little kid were uh, Bruce Lee and Rocky, and they were both really built, you know, and strong, and I wanted to get big and strong and built and athletic, and I wanted to be able to defend myself. But after a couple of years, uh, I realized that it wasn't about that, there's so much more to martial arts besides fighting, besides fitness, there's, there's discipline, there's overcoming adversity, there's dedication, there's so many other things that you can get out of martial art. And then when I came to Asia, I'd say just before I came to Asia, I probably started to lose interest a little bit. But coming to Asia, martial art became a vehicle by which I could explore other cultures. It became the thing that opened the door for me. So I could go in, Jesus Christ, hey! Some talk, some talk, some talk! Uh, no. No. Yes. No problem. Okay. 
Once I came to Asia, uh, martial arts became a vehicle by which I could explore cultures. It became the thing that opened the door for me. So, you know, I, I, you know, you can land in a country and say, oh, I want to explore this culture, I want to experience this culture, but what are you actually going to do there every day, day after day? And you can get a job as an English teacher, but then you're teaching English, you're not experiencing the culture, you're not speaking the language, you're not hearing the language. So what do you do? So by doing martial arts, it's something that I could do where I was with the local people, I was the only foreigner, everybody's speaking the local language, and I'm learning something that belongs to that culture. And you know, maybe you could do the same thing with dance, or you could do the same thing with some other kind of art form. But this way you're learning a traditional art. And in most of the countries where I live, the only people who practice martial art are maybe a handful of professional athletes and, and a few people that are preserving the arts. So in many ways, I get an experience, like in Taiwan, I had an experience studying martial art that almost no Taiwanese had ever had because they never did it. And here in Cambodia, no one had heard of Bokator. There were 300 students when I got to this school. And now, 10 years later, there's, there's thousands and it's well known. But I can have an experience through martial art that certainly other foreigners can't have and that often locals don't even have. Great. Now tell us about Bokator. Bokator is really special because, you know, Cambodia doesn't have much of a history. They didn't have a written tradition of history before the war in 1975. So there's very few written records. We don't know a lot about how the ancient people lived. Unfortunately for Cambodia, on the other side of the border, Thailand has kept accurate records for about the last three to five hundred years. So there's always been a big dispute between Thailand and Cambodia regarding Muay Thai, which is the, the Muay Thai the kickboxing art here in Southeast Asia. So the Khmers have their own form, which they call Brad Al-Sare. This Bokator is definitely older than either of those arts, and there's some carvings on the walls at uh, Angkor Wat that show Bokator techniques dating back to 700,000 years. So for the Khmer people, Angkor Wat is the center of their pride and their history and their culture. And now Bokator is becoming a similar symbol of Khmer pride. That in learning Bokator, you're helping to support the culture of Cambodia and to perpetuate it. Now for me, what was really special was when I found the Grand Master, there were only about nine living masters in Cambodia who he had found after the war. Since then, I think at least two or three of them are dead, and several of them are very old, so they don't teach very much, if at all, anymore. So, in supporting Bokator, I um, feel like I'm helping the Khmer culture to stay alive. And they're facing uh, years, years of problems between, say, Thailand and Cambodia, Vietnam and Cambodia, and then also facing what every country in Asia is facing, which is modernization, globalization, the internet, English language fluency, which are all wonderful things which I support. But as countries develop economically, they start to lose a lot of their old culture. And so I think it's nice just to help support that culture. And when I go to America or, or I get invitations to go to Australia and to go to France, I get invited by Khmer groups who want me to come there and talk to them about Bokator, present Bokator to them. All right, any parting words for today? <laughs> Man, um, the biggest thing I, I, I have to struggle with when I do anything other than martial arts odyssey is I got to tone it down and I'm all over the place, I'm exploding when I talk. But it's just because I'm excited and I love Cambodia and I love Bokator and I love uh, anything to do with Asia and I just get excited but I'm trying to calm it down. But anyway, I hope that uh, my work, my whole body of work, these 10 years of being over here writing, doing movies, doing films, doing videos, doing everything I can, what I hope will come of that is that this record can go out to the world. People in the West who can't afford to travel, they will be able to experience Asia through what I'm doing over here. People who didn't think of coming to Asia, maybe they'll come here and experience it for themselves. So I've done a lot of, I've been a teacher for many years of my life, I'm a certified teacher, but uh, for me, uh, doing this video and writing and all this, this is just another form of teaching so I can help teach the West about the East, and in some cases, teaching other parts of Asia about other parts of Asia. And I hope that people will learn about it and they'll embrace it. And I hope, I hope everyone gets a chance to come here someday. One, two, one, two, three, four.